Hello everyone. Uh, this is video part two demonstrating how to use this color selection or color palette generator tool that I've developed. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about specifics of how to actually use it as a tool. In the first video, I sort of talked a little bit about the theory of how and why I made it in the first place. Um, so anyway, you don't necessarily need to know how or why it works for that first video. It's helpful. It might be interesting, and I'll provide a link in the description. If you want to use it, here is how you do it. Now, you will need to download two files for this to work. You'll need to download this Illustrator file, so you will have to have Illustrator um, the way I have this built to make it usable, and you will need to use a script as well. So, so there's two files. Those links will also be in the description, and you can download them, and then I'll basically show you how to do it. Fundamentally, the reason why the tool exists is because I can put in, I can start with two colors, and from there, I can make a color wheel that's custom to those colors as well as some other information to help me select colors that all work, to work together. And I find that to be extremely useful. So let me show you how it works. Of course, step one is to come to, to up to here to where I have inputs. And you're just going to put in whatever colors you want to have in up there. So select the color. You know, it, it could, be, could be anything. I'll just switch the color a little bit. Let me make this bluish gray color. And then I'll take this color, oh, maybe a nice little orangey thing might might work. And so let, let's say I want to start with these two colors. I know that, and I want to build the rest of, of the color wheel. So, so that was step one. Step two is to select all the colors uh, on this sheet. And so I'm just going to use my direct select black arrow and select them all. And you'll notice in, in here the layers are important. I have these two layers unlocked. And actually, I want to make sure everything else is locked so nothing else is selected. And I will say um, I find this tool to be really useful, um, better than other ones I've created in the past. But I'm still not a programmer. Uh, nothing's perfect. It takes these sort of semi-awkward steps to get there. But once you get the handle of it, it's not too bad. And I, again, I think it's personally, it's very useful to me. So maybe it'll be useful to you. So again, select everything on here on these two layers, colors and palette. Make sure the rest of the layers are locked so you don't select them all. That was step two. Step three, three is to run the script. So to run a script, you go to File, and you go to Script. And in this case, I'm going to go to Other Script. Um, and you will have it downloaded somewhere to just go wherever you have it saved and it will be color selection.js and you just click on it and you can see uh, the whole all the colors around the rest of the color wheel they all they all change uh, now you can get your script to show up permanently in this list up here uh, you just have to put it into your illustrator files there are other videos i don't have one but there's plenty of other videos out there uh, on the web on how to do that. If you are interested, you can go ahead and do that. If not, you just have to select that file every time you want to run the script, which is how I use it. It's not that big of a deal. So, so there you go. And then so essentially, um, step the next step is to basically create the color palette you want to want to work with. And, and most of the time, you might be up here on the color wheel. Um, and so the little, little other thing that I've made is these bars with the little circles. And that's to help you select other colors uh, starting from those two colors. You're not going to use probably every color on this color wheel that I've created. But you know, OK, we've by definition said we're going to use this color. By definition, we said we're going to use that color down here. And the question becomes, what other colors are you going to use? You want to create simple patterns in between or along this color wheel to make those other selections. And so to help think about patterns, I have these bars with the little circles. And I call them the selectors. And we can see that over here in the layer list. And the way I think about the color wheel is essentially in two ways. One is loop. Loop is essentially the whole color wheel. That's what we're looking at now. We've got colors on both sides. Uh, which I'll look at first, and then sector, which is just one half or the other of the color wheel, which I'll look at second here. And I just have this little, I just created this little thing. In, in this case, I'm going to run out and unlock, unlock the layer sector uh, and turn on whichever one or multiple of these you want to use. I think the most interesting and easy way to understand it is, is this two mirror. And the reason why I call it mirror is because you'll notice when I have it selected and I rotate it, it will mirror on the other side. So it automatically adjusts them all and says, oh, well, if you wanted this color as your second color, which is what I was just looking at up here, well, then these are the 
respective points that would match that point. You can see again, it's a simple pattern. Sometimes I like to think of it as this is distance A around the color wheel and this is distance B. This would then be distance A, it's the same number of steps, distance A, distance B and A. So it's A, B, A, A, B, A. So, you know, that's what the pattern is. Again, you could think of it like a square, boom, 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 boom. That's how traditional color theory would think of it. All right, so that's that's one way of looking at it. But but maybe you don't need this many colors. Well, maybe maybe you only need a, uh, two extra colors in here. So you would just turn off the two and turn on the one. I call it one because I think of it in half. That's how I built this. Like you only rotate one, the other one responds, right? And the two, you rotate two, the other two respond basically. So I can, I can rotate one, say here, and it automatically jumps uh, to the other side. So you can see it's just mirroring one side to the other. Uh, and there's a couple of them because maybe, you know, this is a more complex pattern. Like if I turn on, I can turn on two of the one mirrors, two independently. In this case, let me just take this and say, rotate it to say something like here. If you look at it closely, like this is a space of two, so let's call that A. This is a space of three, so let's call that B. And then this is a space of four, so we'll call that C. So this pattern becomes A, B, C, C, B, A, right? So that you would get that by, uh, you know, a light, slightly more complex uh, pattern by turning on both of these rather than just having on this, which is always going to give you an A, B, A pattern only, no Cs. The, the, you don't have to just think of them as being uh, mirrored, though. You can think of them as pure rotation. So um, so you can see just I'm looking at it. I'm just looking across the color wheel. Uh, that's all it's doing. And again, well, maybe you want more than two. So you can turn on another one and rotate e any one independently to get a pattern uh, that you want to get to go across. And so you would just use these in collection or in single to, to help you select patterns within that color wheel. Similarly, if you don't need to use these, the reason why some of these colors stick out on one side and stick in on the other is because these are third points and quarter points. Um, so just to help you think more quickly through how to create a pattern and selection across this. Now this that's essentially loop. If you turn on the sector one, it works identical. I have two on right now. Let me let me turn off this and just go to the mirror to start. Uh, basically, sector is meant to only look at half the color wheel. So it just helps simplify it. It will give the same thing as, as the loop, except for it takes off half of the the arms that you're looking at um, so because you don't need to you could you could simply define a pattern just on one side i only care about these colors that pattern still works uh, or maybe you only care about the, the colors on the other side so you just rotate it the other way around and you can see it, it just sort of gives you the selection of of those colors as needed same thing the rotation in mirror sort of works similarly and you can add more than one in like okay well maybe i like that color but maybe maybe also want that one you know and just get yourself another pattern, or maybe you want to rotate one of, one of them to, to there to sort of create what you want. Uh, different flexibilities in creating those. I do find the more simpler patterns, the better usually, but that's not always the case. Um, so that's why when you might add up some of these other ones up in here. And then as we, we look down below, uh, it has also already changed the, the extended and the blend. I talked a little bit about what those are in the other video, if you want to listen to it. Uh, but it's, the same thing works really down on these lower ones, any of the pattern, any of the colors work. Again, you're not likely to use all of them. Uh, so you might think of them um, in a pattern. So, okay, well, these are my two input colors on this one. So I am going to use them. But maybe I skip one to use this and skip one to use that. So I'd use this, 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 and this. Um, or, you know, maybe skip one to go this way as well. So I might use this purple, this one, this orange this one and, and that color, or whatever patterns you want to use. Really, they, they all definitely do work. The same with blend. This is just another way of looking at colors. Uh, you can use any one you want. They all work, but it, the highs and lows sort of stick out those third quarter half points. Helps you think about pattern. You might use, OK, this is your input you're definitely using. So I might use this one, this one, this one as equal points along uh, till I get to the second color I want to use. Uh, and so once you have the pattern, understand the pattern you want to use, the, the nice thing is all you do is you go to the eyedropper and you just click on the color you, you want, right? And so there's the color to use. If you're using an illustrator, you know, you can use it right here uh, or you can open it up. And I find often the easiest way is to 
select the hex code, the little number sign, the hashtag, that's the hex code number. You just select it. Do control C on your keyboard for copy, open it up wherever you want, like in Photoshop. You can open it up and you can paste in the same spot, the hex code and use it however you want. So so this is a great uh, way to, because this is, you know, it's a eyedropper, you select it, you, you're, you're good to go. Now, the, the one thing I haven't mentioned is these little circles up here. Those are just tints and shades of all these. Uh, color. So the primary color, that would most likely be the one that works for you. But, you know, color theory is very flexible uh, and you might want darker shades or lighter shades. So you can just, you know, select on here to get a, a slightly darker color or, or slightly lighter color. If you want to use those colors, just go ahead and, and use those instead. The last thing I want to say is just a bit less about how to use it. That's how you use the tool. Go ahead and use it all you want. But let me just talk a little bit about the programming. Again, I'm not great at it. This was pretty quickly done. I find it very useful for me, so I figured I'd share it. It's not too hard once you get used to it. If you open up the JavaScript, a couple things. First of all, if you're downloading it, I don't know what other people could do to it. Uh, I don't know if they can get into it, hack in it, put a virus in it. I don't know what. So just be careful with it. I think uh, this is on Google Drive, so Michael Tweed, that's me. If uh, it's not the thing that is, is that's not the user who last edited it. You might want to be careful with it, although someone might go and actually improve the programming because there's definitely lots of room in there. Again, I'm novice at JavaScript. I know the file's messy. I use different methods at different times. There's definitely cases where I could have simplified with different functions and things of that nature. But I got it to a certain point that was working fairly efficiently, and I was happy with it, and it does what I need it to do. So that's the way it is. So if you are better at JavaScript, uh, please excuse that uh, as part of the process. But ultimately, that's what this tool is. So um, again, the files, the two files needed for this are in the description. The link to uh, the video of why this file works is in here as well. Um, I actually have lots of other videos on color theory too that help all explain it that you might be interested in that you can look up. But ultimately, you know, have fun making great drawings and thanks for watching.